as an instructor on how to build Arduino projects, people sent me code fairly often to look at. And 80% of the time, the code is unreadable because they don't follow simple structures. And that's why they have an issue figuring out what the problem is. So with these five tips, we're going to solve that for you. Use descriptive variable names. If you're writing an application, a sketch, to plot information on an x, y axis, you should not just say x equals 100. A descriptive ta uh, variable name would be x axis equal, equals 100. So it tells you a little bit what this integer is being used for. Another one is, for instance, if you declare a button that's going to turn something on and off, you call it button LED on and off pin. So this digital pin 4 is to turn an LED on and off. Using descriptive variable names will help you in the code figuring out what it's all about. Indent your code appropriately. The biggest issue with being able to debug your code is that people write spaghetti. They don't uh, put spaces where they need to. And like take for instance this block. This is an if else block. You don't know where the if if this is nested or not and how it all fits together. When you actually look at this indented uh, part of the code, it, it's a lot easier to read. You can see that all these are together and all these are together so you know how the nesting works and it makes it a lot easier to debug and also see where you made a logic mistake use comments uh, comments are part of documentation but aren't documentation int cat is a descriptive name for a variable but still doesn't tell you really what's being used for so at declaration time i just basically give it a little bit of a description of what it is so like i know what it is if somebody else looks at the code they know what it is and if i come back a month from now i know what it is if i got a block code that does a, a specific task i put a larger description above it what this block of code is specifically about and uh, what this is about is that often you forgot why you wrote something um, this way and what the function of it is especially if you come back three or four months later and you discover there's a bug and you're trying to figure it out now you have to relearn your whole code with comments that makes it a lot easier above your sketch you should have a block like this. This block basically tells who wrote the code, when you wrote the code, a description of what the code is supposed to be, do. If you go back and make add features or alter the code, you can actually write underneath the date that you made an alteration and what you altered in the code, and maybe even change the version number. Use functions. Functions are often seen as a more advanced level of coding, but I disagree. A function gives you the capability to create a block of code that specifically has a task and organize it in a group. And you can call that code from anywhere in your sketch. Now, sometimes, like for instance here, we've got two for loops that sort of do the same thing. And it's fairly simple to write a function to replace these two with one little function. Uh, this is more advanced, but um, it's worthwhile as a beginner user even to look at. Functions make your code easier to read because you organize it by what the function of the code is and easier to find where that block of code that does something specifically. Document, document, document. At the end, you need to document all this. So in your documentation, all the libraries you use, where you found them, if they didn't come from the IDE itself, 
um, the functions you created, a description of what they do and how they work. Um, also, a full explanation of how what your sketch does. Like, just write in English so that somebody who reads it understands what your sketch is supposed to do. If you actually make a project like a clock or something like that, you can also write a little user manual that goes with your documentation that you can give to people if you gift that project to them. Um, part of the documentation, although not part of the coding, you should always document your hardware. A schematic is minimally needed and you can use something like fritzing for that. Uh, break, make a list of breakout boards you used. Um, if they need specific pins, write it down so that later on you can recall that information. If you have exotic sensors and breakout boards, um, write where you found them, where you got them from. So later on, if you want to reuse the same one, you have all this information. If you follow these five tips, I promise you, your project will, will be better, you become a better maker, and life will be better. I hope you enjoyed this. If you enjoyed this uh, little section and you would like to see more of it, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and also check out the little bell so you get notifications when I post new ones. Or subscribe to my Facebook page. The link is in the description below. Or subscribe to my blog's newsletter. There is always a blog with every video. You, the link is below in the description. And if you subscribe to my newsletter, you know what's going on and you get a monthly newsletter with everything. Have a great day. Hope you enjoyed it. See you soon. Bye now.